Good morning. Thank you for joining with us in worship today. God bless you wherever you are. God has promised that he dwells in the midst of his people, whether we're together physically or we're together spiritually as we are now, uh, in one accord, although in different places, God's spirit is with us. And let's invite the Holy Spirit in to our personal environment. You know, we have to stir up the fires of revival and our action is to stir, to invite the Holy Spirit in so that he can come and make the difference. And as we worship today, we are understanding that God is present in power by his spirit to meet our needs. We will um, have a, a time of worship and then we'll be hearing the message for this morning uh, from a wonderful minister of God, Minister Jackie Bowen. Anointed, get ready to be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. Moving there, moving there, just like the day of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. Most holy and righteous God, truly you are God and there is none like you. Lord, right now we look to you in the name of Jesus. We're looking to you, dear God, for strength, for guidance, for courage. And Lord God, we're looking to you for direction. So I pray, dear God, that even as I look to your word, Speak to me and speak through me to your people in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, 
stir up the fires of revival. So what is revival? Now, revival can be many things to many different people. Right now, there's so many businesses that have stopped that think we could do with a revival. We need to be started up again. So the world is looking for revival, but it's very much a physical revival. But what about us as children of God? What are we looking for? Are we looking for a physical revival? So it could be that all those places I used to go to, maybe some shops, maybe some leisure centres, maybe some gyms, different places I used to go to that I can't go to anymore. And I'm really looking forward to that. Or is it, I used to eat at this place, I used to visit that person and I can't go anymore. Is it that we're looking for? Are we looking for a, a physical revival? Or are we, as the church, looking for that spiritual revival that the Lord wants us to look for? Now, this spiritual revival, it must be a spiritual reawakening. You know, where we open up ourselves to God and we say, Lord, we want more of you. We want to know more about you. We want to give ourselves more over to you. So, Lord, that you can use us to affect change, not just in the spiritual, but make changes in the physical. So, today I'll be looking at the scripture, which is found in Judges chapter 6, and we will see how that spiritual revival can affect the physical. Okay, so in Judges, Judges chapter 6, this was a time in Israel's history when they were being greatly oppressed by their enemies, the Midianites. The Midianites were really a really great oppressive force. They were numberless, it said, there were so many of them. And they were very cruel. They would be attacking Israel left, right and centre. So that Israel, it says, had to um, find shelters in the mountains and in rocks and in strongholds. They, it says that they didn't, the, um, the Malachites didn't spare anything of the Israelites' crops. So there was nothing to eat. They didn't spare their animals. So they didn't have any uh, meat or any livestock, whatever the Midianites saw from Israel, they took. And it said that Israel was so impoverished by this, by the situation, they seemed so impoverished. They were in a bad way. And if we look at our situation as it is today, we might think we too, some of us feel, we're in a bad way. We see that there is devastation all around us. People are in isolation, even though it is slowly and very slowly changing. There's still so many people in isolation. There's so many people facing financial hardships. And really, nobody really seems to know what to do they are trying and they're trying different avenues but nobody really has the answer but in verse 6 of um, Judges 6 it actually tells us what the Israelites did and what we should do and it says they cried out to the Lord for help they cried out to the Lord for help and I'm encouraging you today to cry out to the Lord for help. Hebrews 4 verse 16 tells us that we should go boldly to the throne of grace because there we will obtain mercy and we will find grace to help in time of need. I'm encouraging you if you're feeling isolated, if you're feeling helpless, 
if you don't know what to do, if you don't know who to trust, I'm encouraging you to cry out to the Lord for help. That's what the Israelites did. And it brings us down to the text that I'll be looking at in Judges chapter 6, reading from verse 11. And that says, Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was in Ophir, which belonged to Joas, the Abizarite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites. Okay, so they cried out to the Lord for help and we see the start of the Lord's help. So we see that the Lord sent an angel to talk to Gideon. That was the start of the help the Lord was offering. He didn't come down himself and wipe out the Midianites. He didn't send fire from heaven to destroy the Midianites. He didn't even send diseases upon the Midianites so they were too weak to oppress the Israelites. No. You know, we know that God could do all those things. And sometimes when we're in distress, we think that's what he, we want him to do. But he didn't. See, because God doesn't work like that. He doesn't take over. He doesn't want to control his creation. He wants us to partner with him. He wants us to be with him to do the things that will make a difference in the earth. So he sent his angel to Gideon. Now it said that Gideon was threshing wheat in the wine press. So if we look at that, it didn't seem like Gideon was an obvious partner because Gideon was hiding away. Now, whether he was scared or whether it was wisdom, I don't know. But let me tell you one thing. I know it's not a crime to be scared. It is not a crime to be scared. Being scared doesn't disqualify you from being used by the Lord. So whether you feel scared or you feel down or even helpless, still call out to the Lord for help because he will send help. You see, the Lord knows all about isolation. Jesus was in isolation. Jesus spent 40 days and 40 nights in isolation while he was in the wilderness. He was there maybe just two days short of six weeks. So he, he was there a long time. And he wasn't like us that we could pick up the phone and talk to somebody, or we can FaceTime someone or Snapchat them. It, there was none of that. It, he was alone. So he understands what it means to be all alone and in isolation. But, when he came out of isolation, he came out in the power of the Spirit. Why? What did he do while he was in isolation? Well, he spent his time talking to God, communing with him, opening up himself to him, asking his direction, asking him, Lord, what is it you want from me? So after isolation, he was able to come out in power. You see, we are in isolation and we don't want to come out the same way we went in. We need to spend the time now talking to God. We need to open ourselves up for that spiritual revival. We can pray more. We can fast. We can meditate on God's word. We can look at how we've been using what God has given us. It's a time for stop taking. We can review all of these things so that when we come out of isolation, we can be like the Lord coming out in power and in might, not worse off. The topic says, stir up 
the fires of revival. And my top subtopic says, who me? And I'm saying, yes, you. Yes, you are able, right there where you are, you're able to stir up the fires of revival. Uh, what better time in isolation when it's just you and God? Use the time to talk to God, to get close to him, to stir up those fires. And in verse 12 it says, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, and this is um, Gideon, said to him, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valour. The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valour. Hang on a minute. Let, let's just take it back a bit. Gideon was in the wine press threshing wheat. He was hiding away from the Midianites, but he was called a mighty man of valour. Now, a mighty man of valour suggests to me courage, bravery, these sorts of qualities we attribute to a mighty man of valour. But Gideon didn't seem to be exhibiting any of those. You see, when we look at a situation, we can't always look at it in the physical. We have to go beyond that. Because God himself doesn't look at things on the outside. He looks at the inward and he looks at what he can make of us. It's, the scriptures are full of examples of this. And one is when Samuel went to the house of Jesse looking to anoint the next king of Israel. Now Jesse, thinking, oh, I've got lots of sons and they're all big and brave and strong, I'll parade my strong sons in front of Samuel. But the Lord said, no, that's not, they're not who I want. The Lord says, the Lord doesn't see as man sees. For man looks on the outward appearance but God looks at the heart. God looks at who is willing to partner with him. That has got nothing to do with the outside. But as long as we are willing and able, God can and will use us. So Gideon, when he hears this, he says in verse 13, Oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? Isn't this a typical human response? God, if you're with me, why is this happening? But we can see that in isolation, when Jesus was in the wilderness, the enemy tried to come in and deter Jesus from his purpose. We need to be aware of the schemes of the enemy when we're trying to get close to God. He says that he tempted him in the wilderness. So then we'll try and make us doubt. He'll try and tempt us. He'll say, God doesn't care. You're gonna become sick. God's abandoned you. No one cares. You've been on your own for such a long time. But these are lies. Just like Jesus did, we need to rebuke him. We need to rebuke him with the word of God. James 4 says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. So when we get negative thoughts, when we get negative uh, emotions, we need to resist them. We'd say, no, God says he'll never leave me nor forsake me. He is with me and he has a good plan for me and a plan that gives hope and a future. We need to rebuke him so that we can come out stronger than we went in. So in verse 14 now, um, 
the Lord turned to Gideon and said, you know, the Lord has, has called you to save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. But Gideon says, oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I am the least in my father's house. You see here Gideon now turned from questioning whether God was with him to questioning his own ability. Now I know that many of us try not to question God. We not, try not to say, God, are you here? Are you there? Are you with us? You know, what are you doing? We try not to question God, but we have no problem questioning ourselves. We have no problems doubting ourselves. But at these times, we should say, no, I am able to do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We sometimes say, I'm too old. I haven't got the experience. I'm too sick. Um, I've messed up too much in the past. And these things might be so. In our own strength, we'll be like Gideon, hiding and thinking that we can't make any changes in our own lives and in the lives of people around us. But in the mighty hand of God, in the mighty hand of God, these things are nothing. Age, health conditions, experience, background, they are no barriers, no barrier for a revival to happen when you partner with God. I'm encouraging you, I am encouraging you strongly, take this time to partner with God. If there's any areas of your life that you haven't given over, if you haven't given your life to Christ yet, do so. If there are any areas that you're unsure about, seek the Lord's face, pray about them, fast about them, give them over to the Lord, and you'll see what the Lord will do even through you. It says that all of us, all of us, the Lord is no respecter of persons. All of us can be used by the Lord. Now, I don't know the kind of revival that will happen in the world around us. But one thing I do know is that God has made us some wonderful, wonderful promises that I have not yet seen come to pass, which tells me that there is hope for the future. There are plans that God has made for our future that will come to pass. But we need to have faith in God and in what he says. In Hebrews 11, 33 to 34, it said, the faithful, those who gave themselves to the Lord, those who followed the Lord in some very difficult circumstances, it says, through faith, they subdued kingdoms, they worked righteousness, they obtained promises, they stopped the mouths of lions, they quench violence of the sword. They, out of weaknesses, were made strong. They became valiant in battle. They turned to flight the armies of the enemy. A big list, a long list. Isn't that the kind of revival we need? That things are subdued. The Lord says he's put everything under our feet and we need to subdue some things. Don't we want to see the righteousness of Christ in this world? Don't we want to see the promises that God gave us come to pass? Don't we want to see where we are weak? God can pour himself in and use those weaknesses to show his glory. 
to the others, to the world around us. We can become valiant in battle. We can be more than conquerors through Christ. How? By not looking at others and say, the fire revival is going to come through them. But rather saying, the fire of revival can come through me. Stir up the fires of revival. In verse 16 of that chapter, the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Let us not put any limits on God, but let us not put any limits on what God can do through us. Let us not put any limits on what God can do in these current circumstances. Let's not put any limits on what God is able to do through his people who are willing to partner with him, who are willing to open up themselves to him in these difficult circumstances, who are willing then to give over everything to the Lord and who are willing to say, I want to come up higher. The topic says, stir up the fires of revival. My subtopic was, who me? And I'm saying, yes, you. You, you can stir up the fire. It can start in you. It can start in me. And we will be a powerhouse. We will be a powerhouse for the Lord. Starting now and then more so. When all of this is over, we'll be ready to take this present generation by storm. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord encourage you today. And may the Lord partner with you. And may you be stirred and do great things for the Lord. Amen. Yes. Yes, the Lord is the one who speaks to his people and challenges us to come closer to him and to receive his word and to be moving forward at his command. We've heard a, a powerful word uh, from the Lord and let, let's allow that word to penetrate our hearts. You know, if our hearts are hard, we don't receive the word of the Lord. But when we allow our hearts to be moved by the word of the Lord, we obey his voice, then we will see the blessings and the fires of his spirit will ignite us into action. Let, let's pray for a moment so that we can invite the Holy Spirit to do a personal work in each of our lives. Father God, we're so thankful for your truth, your word, your Holy Spirit, who comes to us as we ask in Jesus' name. Father, I ask that wherever your people are gathered, wherever they are listening to your words which have gone forth, that you will respond by the power of your spirit, by the anointing of Jesus Christ, and that you will touch, that you will heal, you will deliver, you will transform, you will break the yokes by the power of the anointing of your spirit, that hearts will be warmed and they will receive you. Bless your people. Hear us as we pray in Jesus' name. You know, faith can move mountains, it can open doors. And as we trust God, as we lean on Him, we know that He's the one who will bring us out. So keep trusting, keep believing, keep the spirit of joy in your heart, and you will in truth be blessed. Let's be dismissed as we say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.
If you've enjoyed uh, watching our service today, may I remind you and ask you, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. God bless.